Otis College of Art and Design presents Setting up your workspace and materials With me, Ronnie Feldman This video will give you advice on materials commonly used in Otis College's Foundation Department as well as many professional art and design studios. First, you should find a sturdy table or desk that can become a dedicated workspace. Ideally, this should be in a quiet area where no one will move or damage your work. The desk should be at least three by four feet to allow for you to work on large or multiple projects. Keep your table neat and cover up delicate projects when not in use to keep them clean. A well-organized workspace will help you be more efficient and lead to cleaner, more professional looking outcomes. When cutting, make sure to use a self-healing cutting board or at least a heavy duty piece of cardboard so you don't damage your table. A drawing board gives you a firm surface to work against. You can also rest it on an easel or on your thighs against a table or sawhorse to make it easier to reach all parts of a large drawing. Paper comes in a variety of colors, weights, and textures. There are two types of paper that I will show here, newsprint and white bond. The newsprint is grayish and very thin. It is relatively inexpensive so it's excellent for quick sketches and gesture drawings. White bond paper can be purchased in many different sizes and weights. It is typically more resilient and brighter white than newsprint and has a sharper tooth. So it's generally used for projects that require greater finish, strong contrast, or harsher handling of materials. You should work on several layers of stacked paper to give yourself a softer, more resilient surface to draw on. It will also protect your work from any irregularities or texture from the table below. We use both graphite and charcoal pencils. Charcoal tends to be much darker, softer, and some would say easier to blend. Well, graphite can be neater and less dusty. Note that they do not work well together. H-pencils are hard and light, while B's are soft and dark, meaning more graphite comes off. The higher the number indicates how hard or soft they are. Usually running from 6H to 9B for most brands. It is not necessary to purchase every hardness of pencil but make sure you have a variety of values. Although you intuitively may want to start a drawing with light marks, hard pencils can create indentation problems that may show up later. Instead, try to draw lightly with a soft pencil and finish fine detail with harder ones. An electric pencil sharpener is recommended for quick sharpening, but you can also use your X-Acto knife or utility blade. To do this, work above a trash can. Place the edge of your blade on your pencil at around a 20 degree angle and push with your thumb, shaving off a small amount. Spin the pencil as you continue carving off thin strips. Then use a sanding pad to refine your point.
This method gives you a longer point, which is great for gestural drawing. There are a couple types of erasers that we commonly use. White magic rub erasers are preferable to pink ones as they don't leave pink smudges. They're also excellent at picking up graphite, but are not recommended for charcoal. Kneaded erasers are usually rubbery and gray in color. They can be used on both graphite and charcoal. When used in a dabbing method, they can lighten a mark without erasing it completely or damaging the paper. When they are dirty, you can clean them simply by stretching and kneading them. They can be formed into any size you need, can be reused extensively, and don't leave piles of eraser dust. There are several types of tape used in the design studio with different levels of tack. Some are permanent while others can be repositioned. If your tape is too sticky and causes your paper to rip, stick it to your clothing first. The lint will reduce the tack. You can use tape to mask off an even border around your artwork. When removing the tape from a border, always pull towards the edge of the page so it doesn't tear. We will typically be using two types of brushes, a half inch flat and a number five pointed round. The finest points are made from the fur on the tail of a sable a mink-like animal. You may find it useful, as you clean your brushes, to have two containers of water, one for the initial cleaning, and another to remove any remaining residue. Wash your brushes with cold or lukewarm water after every use. Mild soap can help too. Thoroughly wash your brush in the first bucket. Wipe it off on a paper towel. Then, Clean off any remaining paint in your second container. Now you should have a clean brush. Check your paper towel. If you see any residue in your paint stroke, repeat the last step until it is completely clean. If your brush has lost its point, you can sometimes reshape it by dipping it in water and flicking it towards the floor. A round plastic palette is useful for many of the techniques demonstrated in our program. Cover it to keep the paint wet. Include a moist paper towel or place it in the fridge to keep it wet longer. Fold the excess paper towel under the palette to keep it neat and save space on your work table. With the basic tools and a comfortable workspace that you can call your own, you are now ready to begin developing your art and designs.